Hi there. Now, in this question, we're told that a particle P of mass 0.3 kilograms is moving with the speed of u meters per second in a straight line on a smooth horizontal table. The particle P collides directly with a particle Q of mass 0.6 kilograms, which is at rest on the table. Immediately after the particles collide, P has a speed of 2 meters per second and Q has a speed of 5 meters per second. The direction of motion of P is reversed by the collision. And we've got to find in part A the value of U and in part B the magnitude of the impulse exerted by P on Q. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back when you're done and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So first of all, what I'd want to do is draw a quick sketch. And my sketch would be of the two particles P and Q with masses 0.3 kilograms and 0.6 kilograms respectively. And I would look at the motion before impact and the motion after impact. And before impact, P, we're told, is moving towards Q. Q is at rest, so I'm going to just put an arrow there with zero at it, zero meters per second, okay? And P is moving with a speed towards Q of magnitude u. So we'll put that as u meters per second. Now, after the impact, we're told that P's direction of motion is reversed. So we'll just put that going in the other direction, okay? And we're told it's going at 2 meters per second. So that's 2 meters per second. And Q moves off with a speed of 5 meters per second. So put that to the right there, going at 5 meters per second. So that's a typical kind of diagram that I'd want to draw in this. Now to get U, what we need to consider is the conservation of linear momentum. I'll just write it down here. We're going to look at, uh, by the conservation, I'll just abbreviate it, conservation of linear momentum. And you should be familiar with this. This is essentially that the total momentum before impact equals the total momentum after impact. But because we're dealing with vector quantities here, we need to set up a positive sense. And it's arbitrary, it doesn't matter which way you do it. I'm going to take though to the right as positive, purely because u would then be in the positive sense. So if we look at the total momentum before impact, then we've got the momentum of P, which is going to be its mass, 0.3, multiplied by its velocity. And its velocity is U. It's in the positive sense, so it's just going to be positive U then. As for Q, its momentum before impact is going to be 0, because its mass is 0.6 times its velocity, 0, gives us 0. So that's the total momentum of the system before impact. Now we look at the momentum after impact. So we've got P now, its mass is 0.3, and its velocity, well, it's going to be minus 2 because its speed is 2 meters per second, but it's in the negative sense, OK? So that's minus 2. And to this, we add the momentum of Q. So its mass is 0.6 and we multiply this by its velocity. Well, it's moving at 5 meters per second in the positive sense, so that's going to be just times by 5. And if you work out the right-hand side here, it turns out to be equal to 3.4. So to get u, all I need to do is divide both sides by 0 0.3. And if you do that, you get exactly that u equals 8 meters per second. OK, so that's part A then. Now for the next part, OK, part B, we've got to find 
the magnitude of the impulse exerted by P on Q. Now, I'm going to mark those impulses in. When they collide, P is going to hit Q, and it's Q is going to receive an impulse okay, in that direction, which I'll label I. But there's going to be an equal and opposite impulse on P, given by Q. So I'll label that I, going in that direction. Now, it doesn't matter which particle you consider to get I. In fact, I'll do the sum for both particles. But we'll start with Q. So I'll just say consider Q. All right. Now, again, impulse is a vector quantity. So we've got to set up a positive sense. And I'm going to set up that positive sense for Q towards the right, just purely because I acts towards the right. OK, so we'll do that. So what is impulse? Well, impulse, we should remember, is equal to the change in momentum. That is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So we've got I, OK, equals the final momentum for Q, which is its mass, 0 0.6, multiplied by its velocity. So that's going to be positive 5 because it's in the positive sense. OK, and from this we subtract the initial momentum. Well, the initial momentum is going to be 0 because we've got 0 0.6 times 0. So I'm just going to put 0 there. So it turns out that that impulse is 0 0.6 times 5, which is 3. And the units would be Newton seconds. Now, you didn't have to consider Q. You could have considered P. So now I'll show you how it will come to exactly the same result. If we consider P, this time I'm going to take positive, though, to the left, because the impulse acts to the left. So we'll have our positive sense to the left. So what have we got this time? Well, we've got I, and it equals the final momentum for P, which will be its mass, 0 0.3, multiplied by its velocity, which is going to be positive 2, because it's in the positive sense. So that's 0 0.3 times 2. And from this, we subtract the initial momentum, which will be 0 0.3 for the mass, multiplied by its velocity. Now, we found out that u was 8 meters per second, but it's in the negative sense now to what we've taken. So we've got to times that mass by minus 8. So what we've got here is 0 0.6 plus 2.4, which gives us 3, 3 Newton seconds again. So you can see you're going to get exactly the same answer whichever particle you take.